Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Welcome. And again, welcome, welcome, welcome uh, to the Truth of the Matter radio broadcast. And for those who do not know, you are listening to your favorite pastor's favorite pastor, Pastor Rob Scarborough. I want to say welcome and greetings to each and every one of you uh, out there, all those who listen to us so faithfully uh, each and every uh, Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, those who tune in to us uh, regularly uh, at the 1 o'clock hour on Tuesday and 12 noon, which is, of course, today, Thursday. Uh, and then to our detractors and even our enemies, we want you all to feel right at home right here as we would like to welcome you all as well. Uh, <clears throat> make no mistake about it, uh, we are making uh, great efforts. And by the grace of God, uh, and it's only by the grace of God, uh, <clears throat> we are accomplishing what uh, the Lord has sent us to do. And so we give God all the glory and the honor for that. Uh, for everyone out, to everyone out there who is listening and tuned in, of course I have just some, uh, hopefully some brief need to know information uh, as the engineers send me over different information to make sure I get to you. So I'm going to check this list because every week it gets longer. Uh, shout out to the long-winded engineers that send me this information. So let me see if I can't get through this as quickly as possible. Uh, of course, today is June the 29th, 2017, and we do want to welcome everybody that's listening to us <clears throat> on the AM and FM dial, uh, rather it be 940 AM or 105.7 FM. Uh, we do want to remind everybody that have that would like that would like to write us, and for those that have written us in the past physically, those that enjoy the uh, old school approach of writing a letter or sending contributions through the physical mail, you can reach us at P.O. Box 11141, Norfolk, Virginia 23517. That's P.O. Box 11141, Norfolk, Virginia 23517. Uh, also, uh, many of our <clears throat> ministries have, are, are now being loaded up on YouTube. Uh, now, I, I warn you, there's a lot of stuff that we are not responsible for. Um, but uh, thanks to those who have uh, worked um, very, very diligently, uh, you can now catch some of our more recent activities by way of YouTube. Uh, let me see here. Also, if you have not been to it, go to our site. That's right. Uh, we have over 300 category, uh, 300 titles, uh, all by subject matters and categories. Uh, for your convenience, you can go and seek out, search out what may be on your heart. If you want answers, you can go and get them right now. That's right. Go to Pastor Rob dot us. Again, go to Pastor Rob dot us. And surf through our uh, many, many, many titles. Uh, I think it's well over three or four hundred titles. Uh, also, if you have not done so, uh, please, please, please go and <clears throat> make a donation. Uh, for those that do not know how radio ministry works, we don't get paid to come on the radio. We pay to come on the radio. And so with the information that we give here, it is imperative with the, with the information that is... Um, rare, to say the least. It is imperative that you all join us, partner with us uh, in making sure that uh, this ministry carries on and is, and is blessed uh, throughout its move as the Lord has touched it and inspired it to be so. So do your part. Many people complain about... Uh, liars and hustlers and false preachers and false prophets and all of these things and the crooks and the politicians. Uh, but now you have your opportunity uh, to be a part of the solution. And if you're not part of the solution, you already know you're part of the problem. So please, if you haven't done it, go to PastorRob.us or you can go to PastorRobScarborough.com. Both of those addresses will lead you back 
to our site, which has uh, which we in which we have loaded up numerous information that you can download. That's right, you can be a blessing to the site and download straight to your smartphones, straight to your PCs, straight to your tablets. Go and do that. Uh, do it right now. Go and check it out. Pastor Rob dot us, and of course, uh, Pastor Rob Scarborough dot com. Uh, let me see. Last but not least, don't forget tonight. That's right, tonight, each and every Thursday, each and every Thursday, we are blessed uh, to meet a number of people, visitors, uh, regulars, uh, just all in the family of God. We just were so grateful that this class has been a success, a huge success uh, for as long as it has been. And we say that it's all God that has done it. So meet us there tonight for our. Uh, <clears throat> Bible class in which we're giving you information you cannot get anywhere else. And uh, I'll tell you more about that, as always, in just a moment. But don't forget to meet us at 1570 North Military Highway, the Holiday Inn. Again, meet us at 1570 North Military Highway, the Holiday Inn. Uh, and of course, doors open at 730. Don't forget, meet us there. You do not want to miss it. The information that we're giving out, uh, oh my goodness, it, 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 it's not heard pr uh, on pretty much any Christian network or non-Christian, rather secular or uh, religious based, you cannot find this information. And I highly recommend that it, while you can get it, that you get it, hold on to it, grab it, and as the Bible says, buy the truth and sell it not. So we do want you all to know that. Well, that's that. Uh, let's go to the phone lines today and open up the lines. As always, uh, I travel from Richmond just to come up here and talk to you all live. I want to take your Bible questions, your comments. Uh, maybe you need a, a something in, in the Department of Advisory. Maybe you need to be spiritually uh, advised about certain things. I, 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 I'm careful, but I'm here to tell you what does say of the Lord, as the Lord would give me permission. So please, 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 um, I am here to serve you by way of information, and we want to invite you all to call. And if you don't have any questions or comments, just call and say hello. Let me know that I didn't drive all the way from Richmond to talk on air, uh, to talk uh, to air, but I came to talk on air to God's people. All right, three five seven nine five four six, and or six two two nine five four six. Again, that's seven five seven three five seven nine five four six. Or six two two nine five four six. Let's go to the phone lines and take this call. Caller, you're on the air. Thank you for holding. Hey, Pastor Rob, it's Austin checking in from Toronto. Yes, sir. Welcome. How are you? Today. Yes, sir. Welcome. Uh, just checking in, and I uh, hope the uh, phone lines get tied up today. I mean, uh, where too many people call. Okay, and, and Austin just, uh, Austin fell out of the mail truck again today. We, we just lost him. Uh, uh, prayerfully, he's all right, but uh, it seems that he may have had some cell phone difficulty. Uh, is that Frog Wireless, Austin? What is that? All right, 357-9546, uh, We've been discussing in depth and then in many ways, not in depth at the same time, the topic of salvation. And, and, and under the heading of salvation, we have exposed the many, many, many lies that are taught within the church. Now, that's right. Christendom. Um, the, 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 the consistent inconsistencies that is taught under the banner of Christendom. Uh, we've, we, we've exposed to you over the last couple months what heaven is. Uh, we'll talk about that, what hell is and what it is not. Many topics we're going to discuss right after we take this call regarding 
uh, the topic of salvation that the church world, that's right, your church, has taught you in error. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, you need to come out tonight. You need to make your way to this Bible class that is exposing truth at a uh, alarming uh, rate. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, we, we, it is unbelievable when you find out. It's going to be a, a, a feeling of just, uh, you're just going to be in unbelief when you find out how much you've been lied to about. 357-9546 or 622-9546. Let's take a caller. Caller, you're on the air. Thank you for tuning in. How you doing? Wonderful. How are you? Hello? Hey, how you doing? All right. Welcome. All right. This is the guys at the barbershop. Hey, what's up, brothers? We haven't called in a while. We just let you know we still got our ears on. Uh, well, listen, man, I, I'm glad to hear from, from my brothers that, that are keeping my other brothers sharp, uh, lined up, and ready to go. Uh, it's good to hear from you all. And, uh, man, we've been making great, gr uh, Lord knows, we've been making great progress, even in our Bible class. But I got to tell you, it's good to hear from my brothers over at the barbershop. And if y'all want to give a shout out, let people know where you're getting, uh, where you all are, uh, are, are performing such a great service go ahead and do it now i want to give you that opportunity to, to, to give a shameless plug to let you know that this barbershop is listening to the uh, the truth of the matter broadcast uh go ahead and do it now if you like all right it's coming for a blast from chesapeake chris styles barbershop um Pastor Rob, let you know that you're the man. Hey, man, listen, I appreciate you guys. You guys over there, uh, I thank God for all of you, brothers. And uh, y'all heard it in Chesapeake. Shout out to Chesapeake. Listening to uh, Chris uh, from Chris Styles Barbie, uh, Barbershop. Go over there, uh, uh, get you a nice taper, get, get you a fresh haircut, a roundup, whatever it is you're feeling. Nothing like the feeling of getting a fresh haircut. I don't have long before I won't have any hair, but nonetheless, I I do remember what it feels like. So shout out to you, brothers, and I'm thankful that you all are tuned in. All right, three five seven nine five four six. I mean, make no mistake about it. Uh, there, there is no gospel radio show that, 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 that the brothers, that, that the folks are out in, in the hood, that, that the people who are in the rich areas, and those who are on their lunch breaks at work, those in the nursing homes, those that are incarcerated, my brothers that are doing time are tuned in too because they are tired of watered down lies that come from the, the Christian church. And, 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 and most people are venturing to other beliefs, other doctrines, other religions because Christianity has failed to stand up and give a, a, a necessary explanation as to what it is they believe and why they believe it. And, uh, you know, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Um, I, I'm a firm believer that there's no more ignorant people. And I can say that because I'm talking about my people. There is no more ignorant people under any religion heading in the world than Christianity. Uh, we like to shout. We like to sing. Uh, we like to dance. We, we like to put on uh, by way of emotion. But we don't know anything. And that's why we walk around telling lie after lie after lie after lie. And that's why it's important that you all who are listening come out to this Bible class. And if you're listening and you never heard this before, you're riding your car, you say, well, preacher, what makes you think you got the truth? Ladies and gentlemen, God's word is true. Okay, I, I got to make that clear today. The Bible says, let every man be a liar and let God be true. What I am telling you is that almost every church, every church is using the same Bible to tell you a different lie. And, and, and what I'm telling you is most of what you've been taught in the church is fairy tale, it's folly, it's make-believe, it's satire. That's all it is. It's a joke. Uh... For those who are listening, by the way, the phone lines are open at 357-9546. I'm very grateful. I love when people call. Let me know that you are tuned in. And it's also 622-9546. Any one of those lines are open. That's right. Any one of those lines are open that we might be able to serve you by uh, way of information. 
So please, 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 every each and every one of you out there, call me. Let me know that you tuned in. If there's something that may be uh, pressing upon your heart that you've always wanted to ask a preacher, ask a pastor, uh, we've been discussing hell. We've learned so much. And I think that today we're going to begin to move forward. We're going to, in the next week or so, we're going to progress forward. Okay? I, I have, uh, I'm, I'm going to call it a case closed. I, I've presented challenge after challenge, question after question. You all have called. You've begged your ministers in this area. You've begged the preachers in this area to call and give an answer. And they, 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 they won't do it. I, 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 I'm, I believe they can't do it. They are hiding. I believe that. Uh, what we say when we come on these airwaves, when we grab this microphone, this sacred weapon, that's what it is, it's a weapon. When we grab this microphone, the things that we say contradict 99% of what you're taught in your churches. And very few people has the uh, the gall, the, the uh, boldness, um, to call us uh, to the carpet or to call us uh, to prove what it is we're saying. We got another caller? Let's go and take this caller. 357-9546. 622-9546. Caller, you're on the air. Thank you for tuning in. Oh, yes. Um, I'm calling to find out. Um, I heard from another pastor, uh, Gino Jennings, about the information. He was here recently, um, the the Church of Jesus Christ about the same topics about we not learning the, all the truth, uh, you know, from pastors. Uh -huh. But I see what he's doing. He's building churches. He's saving so many people and turning their lives around. What are you doing with your information? Can you give one example of how you're actually helping people? Okay. <clears throat> there are multiple examples of lives being changed. Um, you know, I could tell you what I observed that's going on, but I would challenge you and I would encourage you to listen to the multiple people that come and eat every week. Listen to the testimonies. Listen to the testimonials. Listen to the written and verbalized people whose lives have changed. I could tell you some things I've watched happen. I can tell you about the lives that are being set free. I can tell you about folks that have been healed. I can tell you about Jesus coming to convert. Make no mistake about it. I, I don't know what, what, what uh, Jennings or, or I, don't, I can't speak for what he's doing. But let me just give you a little hint to think about. It's if if there's salvation or conversion that's going on over there or anywhere, then it wouldn't be Jennings doing it anyway. And it wouldn't be Pastor Scarborough doing it anyhow. It would have to be the Holy Spirit. You see, the whole idea uh, that we can even bring some win somebody to the Lord, the whole idea that we can get somebody saved, the whole idea that this is about us is all false, uh, just nothing but false claims locked into the doctrine of works, locked into the doctrine of salvation by works, which is another thing that we've hit on in a major way. So I could tell you the things, but I would prefer people call in or, pe or that you would come out to the class and talk to the people. Who's better to tell you about what happened to the people than the people? Otherwise, I'm just bragging or boasting on what I think is is happening through me. And I'm the truth is, I'm nothing but a bag of dirt. That's it. That's it. Any preacher that tells you he's anything other than that, he has elevated himself above what, uh, his pay grade. At the end of the day, I'm nothing. But with Christ inside of me, I can do all things. But I understand the most important thing, and that is, without Him, I can do nothing. So no, I don't. I don't. I, I'm not certain. Where that would come from, I can't give an answer for Pastor or Apostle Geno Jennings or whatever his title may be. I can't answer for him, nor am I trying to. But but I would say, talk to the people who are blessed. Talk to the people who are who come out and sacrifice. Listen to me. We have a number of people that drive all the way from Tidewater just to to come to Richmond, just to come to Sunday service. Until we're able to build a permanent location here, there are many people that do just that so hopefully that would answer your question and then i would challenge and i would also ask my sister if you're not doing anything call me back 
Let me have a little talk with you and find out where you are. Are you being blessed with the right information? Are you growing? Uh, how, how, ha how has your walk with the Lord progressed you by way of information? I would love, listen, I, I open up, this is a different kind of radio broadcast. This is real talk radio. And so if you would like to, I, I would challenge that most of us have been lied to. And sister, I don't know you, but I would dare to say to go out on a limb and I, and I could be wrong to say, sister, you're part of that great uh, number of us that have been lied to by many preachers, many pa uh, so-called pastors, so-called bishops. And today is the day of reckoning. Um, what better thing to do than to receive the truth of God on today? But I, I, I'm not confused. And I'm not tricked by one thing. If God don't do it, it cannot be done. Got a caller? 357-9546-622-9546. Let's take this call. Caller, you're on the air. Thank you for tuning in. Hello, Pastor. How you doing this afternoon? Wonderful. How are you? I'm great. Um, in the New Testament, there's a story of how Satan tempted Jesus. And Satan told Jesus that if he would worship him, that he would make him the ruler of all the kingdoms in the world. So does Satan now today still have power to delegate the kingdoms of this world to anyone that would worship him? And if so, um, of course he would be using it. Um, should we support any nation in this world, Democrat, Republican, the United States, Israel? Should okay. we only be supporting the true Israel, which is the church. Okay, now now listen. You asked a wonderful question. Do you have a moment? Can you stay on the line? Yes, sir. All right. Let's let's. I want to break down what you asked because what you asked was very was very very well stated. Uh, your question was good, but there's so much in that question. I want to make sure I cover it all. So you asked first about Jesus being tempted. Now, what I like to do is I like to use these teachable moments to show you some things that most people don't understand. So let's start from the beginning of what happened when Jesus was tempted. And I'm going to show you what most Christians miss. You are familiar with the story clearly as you have brought it to our attention today. Are you familiar with how Jesus arrived to be tempted by the devil? Do you know how he got there? Well, if I'm not mistaken, he was, he received the Holy Spirit, and then the Holy Spirit prompted him to go out into the wilderness to be tempted. Wonderful. Now, you are, you are, you are light years ahead of most church folks, because most church folks don't understand that first principle. The first principle you just stated is something that, and, and folks will tell you they believe it, but trust me, they don't. And I'm going to show you how. That Satan only does what he, and, and let me say it this way, Satan always shows up where he's needed. Now that's going to sound crazy. So let me say it again because I mean just what I'm saying. Satan only shows up where he is needed. Now you say, who needs Satan? I have, I have encouraged people, and I'm going to encourage all of you all that are listening. You need to come out to this class that, uh, every Thursday because we're teaching you the, the sovereignty of God. Now, it was the Spirit of God that led Jesus to be tempted by Satan. And that tells me several things right away. Number one, Satan is not an independent creature. Satan is not a creature that operates independent of God's delegating power. Now, when Satan offered Jesus the kingdoms of the world, let me give you something to think about, because this is a good question. Satan knew who he was talking to. We can agree that Satan knew who he was dealing with. In order for Satan to offer Jesus all of that, we have to ask ourselves, did Satan try to trick Jesus by lying to him and offering him something that he didn't have? Or did Satan know full well that Jesus 
knew exactly what was going on, that Jesus knew who he was, and that what Satan was doing was offering something he legitimately had claim over. Now, I want to tell you today, sir, that Satan absolutely is running rampant and has control over these, now watch this, over this world. Now let me explain what that means. The term this world, okay, the word world deals with the cosmos. And we got to understand when I say that Satan has control over this world, I want you to understand that that's delegated. Meaning God still is in control of all things, including Satan. But he has sent Satan. Now, this is going to really mess Christianity and its theologies up right away. I'm telling you, it's going to mess it up. I am telling you that God literally created Satan and he sent Satan. I said Satan is God sent. Now, does that mean I'm calling Satan good? No. Am I saying that Satan is a good character that God is pleased with? And that I'm, no, 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 no. What I am saying is that the Christian church has lied to us, sir, when they tell us that God created the devil, some good angel, who later malfunctioned. And you know, like I know, that most Christians believe that Satan one day turned bad. Would you agree? Yeah. That is a lie. That is one of the lies I'm talking about that's taught every Sunday that Satan is some Frankenstein that turned bad or malfunctioned against its creator. Satan means adversary. Which means that when God created Satan, he created Satan to be an enemy of the church. Now, let me tell you where I'm going with this. The Bible says Satan is the God in the book of 2 Corinthians. Satan is the God of this world. So we have scripture bases that also bears witness that Satan is the God of this world. Now, let me tell you this. When the Bible talks about the world and the nations, he's not just talking about uh the, the United States. He's not just talking about Africa. He's not just talking about uh, Japan. or China. He's talking about the people. And I want you to understand this. The Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. The truth is this, sir. Every one of us will be led by the Spirit to meet Satan at our appointed time in which we will be offered the world. And most of us don't realize it, but all of us have been offered the world and all of us have sometimes chose, ch have taken our uh, uh, abilities and we have chose the world over the word of God. Now, why would God send Satan why would a preacher tell you that God is literally sent Satan? Now, here is more theology twisted up. Satan does nothing, and I repeat, Satan can do nothing without God. I didn't say without God's permission. See, that's still wrong theology. Whenever you say Satan has to get permission, you got to be careful. Because what happens is this. Permission makes it look like Got to be careful how you use that word Permission makes it appear as though Satan is going out to get people And he has to check with God at the last minute To see if it's okay No, 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 no Let's back it up and get the true meaning of what this means I am telling you, sir That Satan is minding his own business Going to and fro in the earth and that it's actually God himself who says hey Satan hey devil hey hey Satan what are you doing over there that's how God talks he says come here devil I want to know have you seen my servant have you considered my servant now think about another story have you considered my servant Job 
If you can remember the story of Job, Job was also a sign, a date with Satan. And it wasn't Satan's idea to get Job, like the preachers in the church say. It was actually God's idea to start the whole shebang. Now, why would God set his people up with the devil? Now, this is really going to blow some people away, but I, I know I'm taking a while, brother, but I want you to get how much is in that story that we miss. God uses Satan to carry out his plan of saving us. Now, that really sounds crazy, because what people are going to get from that is that I said God uses the devil to help us get saved. And that's exactly what I'm saying. But I need to back up and explain it. Satan is not out here trying to help us get saved. Satan is out here to kill, steal, and destroy. And the church knows that, but what the church doesn't know is who sent them to do it. It was God that created Satan to kill, steal, and destroy. You say, well, pastor, how does that help us get saved? In the book of Corinthians, sir, the Bible teaches us that Satan... Or that we are delivered, that God will deliver such a one over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Now hold on for a minute. God turns people over to Satan for the destruction of their flesh. Well, you say, well, Pastor, where does the Bible say that? 1 Corinthians 5 and 5 says that God will turn a man over to Satan to be destroyed. Now that makes sense because God created Satan and Satan came to kill, steal, and destroy. Now hold on, Pastor. Why would he do that if he's trying to save me? One of the things that the Christian church don't understand, sir, is that destruction or being destroyed is a prerequisite to man being saved. Before God can ever make you what he wants you to be, he's got to destroy who you are. That's what the Bible means when he said you must be born again. Well, I'm almost done, but I got to show you a little bit more. So I can deal with this politics, these lies in politics. So, the rest of that scripture says something interesting, brother. In 1 Corinthians 5.5, 5, it says... To deliver man to Satan for the destruction of the flesh so that the spirit might be saved, may be saved in the day of the Lord. So what the Bible just told me is God turns man over to the devil so that the devil can destroy him so that man's spirit can be saved while his flesh is dying. Now watch this. The Bible says if you sin, you will surely what, sir? You will die. That's it. If you die, you're being destroyed. Satan is out here tempting us that we might commit sin. Once we commit sin, and once we are born in sin, we begin to die. Satan thought that that gave him the victory. What Satan don't understand is, it is death it is necessary that death be the number one agent to bring about life. Oh, I hope you understand what I'm saying today. Nobody can live forever and ever and never die except he first die. <laughs> the Bible says it like this. A seed has to be planted, has to fall into the ground in order for there to be a harvest. So death is actually the secret weapon of God to bring about life. Now, Christians don't understand that. That's why, and most people don't understand, that's why we cry so much when people die and we're so happy on birthdays. But the Bible says that God, the Bible says that God loves the smell of death. Oh, y'all didn't hear what I just said. Did you know that Bible says death is like a sweet smell to God? Well, let me ask you a question. How does death smell to people? It stinks. That is because our mind is so far from the mind of God. Our ways are so different than the ways of God that we view death as an enemy 
But we don't realize that that enemy will be under God's feet and that God will use death and death will become the agent that will bring about life. Now, and I'm going to give you a chance to come back because I know I've said a lot. As far as the politicians, what side we should be on, let me tell you which party you should be. You should be God's party. I want you to listen good. If I had time, I would break down for you the lies of the government. That's why you ought to go to my site, PastorRob.us, and get the series I got called Unplugged, where I expose the government, I expose the presidency, I expose these offices that are all Masonic. But let me just tell you this. This so-called democracy is nothing more than the worship of a god called Demos. Go look it up. Demos. It's where you get the word demonstration. It's where you get the word democracy. All of them demo words come from the god Demos. And I want you to understand, sir, that it's nothing more than recycled Nazi Communists, the same stuff that you've seen over the years, there's nothing new under the sun. As a matter of fact, let me tell you like this, sir. There's a bird. That's right. This government is a bird. And it has two wings. And you want to know which wing should we get on? Well, let me tell you which wing you should get on. Nothing. Kill the whole bird. Because both wings... Listen good. Both wings are, uh, operate from the same brain of the same head of the same bird. Which means that the powers that be have created an illusion. Uh, and there is a delusion that people think that Republicans and Democrats are actually different. And if I had time, I would break down and show you they are not. Most of what you're seeing is called order out of chaos. You have to give people a choice. Coca Pepsi, Lakers or Celtics, uh, Hillary or Donald. And the truth is you don't really have a choice at all. You see, when people think they have a choice, but don't know that they're choosing from the same thing, they are tricked into believing that they have power. And let me tell you this, sir. I know this is going to be hard for you to believe, but I have proven it over and over. This country gives the people no power. Your vote has no power. Your marching has no power. And your voice has no power. If it did, they wouldn't let you do it. If your vote could change anything, they'd never let you do it. Brother, go get my series that explains how the United States is a corporation, not a country. I need to say that again. You don't live in a country. The United States is not a country. The United States is a corporation. And you can go research that. It is a business. So, brother, I could go on and on. I know I'm saying a whole lot. I just got word from the engineer. It's on the front page of my site, PastorRob.us. Go download that series. But, brother, I would say this. These people, and I don't care where you go, the Republicans and Democrats are the same folks. All the black folks, they, they, uh, well, not all of them, but a lot of them think they ought to be Democrats. Ignorantly, they fail to realize that Dr. Martin Luther King was a Republican. Ignorantly, they realize they fail to realize that the Democrats or that the Republicans all root out of the Ku Klux Klan, and that the Ku the Ku Klux Klan roots from watch this. This is gonna really blow some people away. Was invented by the powers that be and root back to the Masons. And I'm gonna really make some people up, upset because even the Black Panthers have their roots. In Masonic uh, origin. You say, I've never heard anything like this. You have to begin to research. That's why you these folk listen to this radio show. Because I say the things no other preacher is going to say. Masonic order runs the government, runs the presidency. That's why when you go to vote, you go to a poll. A poll doesn't decide who's the president. A poll, what is a poll? A poll is a survey. 
It's just seeing who people would pick if they could pick. It doesn't really decide who's going to be there. So, brother, I could go on and on and on. Last week's broadcast, I exposed a lot of the government then. I talked about what it means, what uh, what money means, and what, what's going on with the banking system. How they come from the Knights Templar. Go and research the Knights Templar, which was held in by the Vatican. Uh, the Vatican, which was ran by the Pisos family. Go look up the Pisos family. Which also, listen, the chain of command just goes higher and higher and higher, and it's nothing but evil. So yes, we've been tricked, we've been duped, and nobody's talking about it, but you're hearing it right here today. Brother, I'm sorry, I know I said a whole lot, but I hope I answered some of your questions. Yes, that was a, that was a very good explanation. I've, I've conversed with some other Christians about this same subject, and I wasn't too terribly satisfied with the answer. Well, and, you know, my spirit's always been kind of leaning to exactly what you're saying, and, and it's, you know, it makes perfect sense. The, Did you know that presidents are in the Bible? A, the Satan is actually a necessary evil. Yes. In order, in order that our flesh may die, so we can have true life. It was a setup. Let me. Can I? Can I give you a quick revelation? I think it's going to bless you. You remember in the Garden of Eden when God was dealing with the serpent, and He was handing out His, you know, His punishment, so to speak, and He told the devil, "On your belly, you're going to roam and eat dust." Yeah. Do, do you know what that? Do, do you have a? Do you understand what that really means? I don't think I do. I've always kind of wondered that. Now I'm going to. I'm, I'm going to bless you right now and show you what it means. First of all, the Christian Church lied to us. They told us that's why snakes don't have legs. <laughs> if you ever listen right. to a Christian preacher, you ever heard that before? Yes, sir. That's a big fat lie. Snakes don't have legs because snakes don't have legs. Let me tell you. What God meant when he told Satan, you will roam on your belly and eat dust. Snakes don't eat dust today, sir. I think we can both agree that snakes don't dine on dirt. That's right. So what did God mean? He was talking to the serpent, the devil. Do you know who Satan is? The Bible says he is as a roaring, lying, seeking who he can devour. Do you know what devour means? To eat up or swallow. So what is the serpent, the devil, eating today? Dust. Now, my brother, what is dust? Dust is us. Our flesh. So when the Bible says give no place to the devil, he's telling us to stop operating in the flesh because every time we operate in the flesh, we give the devil a hot plate, a fresh meal, and we give him a place. Satan was commanded to eat off of humanity. It was actually God that sent Satan to go around tempting people, so to speak, and to do what he does so well, to bring the sin out of us. Now, let me show you the prophecy. He told Satan that the woman seed would bruise his head. You remember that scripture he told the serpent? And that yeah. his head would crush her heel. Now, let me tell you what that means, because, again, the Christian preachers have no idea. What that means is Satan would crush the woman, or this, watch this, would crush or bruise her heel, which means Satan would cause us problems and cause us to sin. That's bad. But the Bible says through that, the woman would crush his head. How will the woman's seed crush his head? Because through the death that will come through Satan tempting us to sin would be how Christ would come and die and then take the power over death and then control death, use death as a defeated enemy and then now we would have access to live and never die again. That's what he means when he says that those two will work hand in hand. Satan would get lead way and then the woman would get lead way and it would be all God's plan. God is not confused about what he's doing, sir. God has worked this plan from the beginning. And I'm going to tell you something else. It was God's idea. It was God's idea. God's pre-planned uh, counsel and will that man would sin. Even though he told him not to sin.
And that's what the church can't understand. Brother, I hope I've been some help to you. Yes, sir. I really appreciate it. Bless you, sir. 357-9546. 357-9546. And again, these are the type of principles that the Christian church, that I'm inviting pastors, preachers, bishops, come out and fellowship with us tonight. We're going to close out this topic of salvation. Listen to me. Almost all the tenets of salvation we have been lied to about. I am telling you now, most of us have never understood even the most basic and fundamental of truth. Uh, uh, where can I begin? Maybe there's somebody listening that just heard me explain it. And you never heard it explained like that before. Call me up right now. 357-9546. 357-9546 or 622-9546. I'm taking comments or questions. This is what the church is missing. We're missing good teaching. Substance. Let's go to the phone lines. Caller, you're on the air. Good afternoon, Pastor. How are you doing today? Wonderful. How are you? I'm oh, just fine. Thank you, Pastor. Pastor, uh, you were saying that the uh, uh, Lord... Um, had Satan to be uh, for uh, his purpose. But doesn't the Bible say that death is the last enemy? That shall be destroyed, uh. which is the prophecy that it will be, that his head will be bruised. The, the last enemy that will be destroyed is death. Well, how will it be destroyed? Because when Jesus is resurrected, he's now taken power over the what? The grave. Remember he said, oh, death? Well, well that's what he did. The, now, why does he say the last enemy that shall be destroyed? Because that the enemy has to be destroyed over who? Over everybody. Jesus is just the first to start us, to start the ball rolling over many. That's why the Bible calls Jesus a first fruit of them that slept. Because Jesus is the first one to, 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 to uh, bring death, the enemy of death, to a defeat. But all of us will defeat death as we are resurrected by and through Jesus Christ. Okay, one last question. Go right ahead. Okay, um, most of your teaching, I pretty much get it. But it, it, it's some, I know it's in the individual when they don't get it, they mean there's something wrong with the individual when you explain something as well as you do and they're still not getting it. Uh, they're not getting the discerning of exactly what you are saying. And what you, like I said, it, and, and a lot of it makes so much sense, and, but it, it just... I'm not explaining it right what I'm saying. What you're saying is, how in the world can people get it and some people can get it? What's going on? Why is it that some people can grasp it and others can't when it, clear, when it looks so clear to those who can? Right. Well, brother, I'm so glad you asked. And I'm going to make another comment uh, that's going to blow you away. And this is going to really sound confusing. Only the Holy Ghost can open up the eyes of understanding of any individual. Now, that doesn't happen to everybody at the same time. Now, now if that's true, then what I just told you, and I got scripture that says, God actually, and this is going to sound crazy, but hey, that's why y'all listen to this radio broadcast, because I'm telling you what you've never heard. God literally causes people to believe what is wrong for a season. Now, I know some Christians ain't going to like what I just said. God literally keeps some people blind. Spiritually blind. And he does it purposely for a season. Now, most of y'all Christians going to say, that's crazy. God want everybody to know the truth. Well, just hold on for a minute. <laughs> you know, you're, you're talking too fast. <laughs> if God truly wanted everybody to know the truth, listen to what you're saying. Listen to how we say stuff and don't know what we're saying. If God wanted... Listen to that. God wants. God wants. God wants. Oh, be quiet. God don't want nothing that he don't get. 
The Bible says every righteous desire will be granted. The Bible also says that every purpose, every purpose or plan of God will never return void. God always gets what he desires. So now let's bring it back. You got all these religious people that say that ain't right. That ain't right. Well, let me just say this. If you say that God wants everybody to know the truth right now, then my question to y'all is why don't everybody know the truth right now? Mm -hmm. What you're saying in essence is that God wants something that he can't have. Mm -hmm. Now, if God is truly sovereign, and most Christians don't know it, but they don't believe he is, I do, then God is in control of who knows what when they know what. Because only God can open up the eyes of those that cannot see. Now watch this. I can show you scripture that even when a false prophet even when a false prophet tells a lie that God is actually the one that's behind. And this is going to really get crazy. This is going to get crazy when I say this. But you know what? Like everything else I say on the radio, they don't have any scripture for what they believe. I'm going to, when I hang up with you, I'm going to let somebody call me and tell me that what I just said ain't true. Let's see. Watch this, sir. Oh, oh, hold on one minute. Let me finish this point. I am going to tell you that God actually is behind. God is the single-handed promoter of false prophets telling lies. It, watch this. God uses Satan. To cause false prophets to tell lies so that people won't know the truth until he decides is there predetermined time to know the truth. Go right ahead, sir. So is, is that why the Bible says a righteous man has to fall seven times? Bingo. That's good. I wasn't even going to go there, but that's even better. <laughs> because... What makes a man righteous is not that he never falls. Right, See, you got that? Yeah. What calls him righteous is that he's able to overcome his failure. And here's what I want to say. All of us must go through eating from the tree of knowledge. <laughs> because watch this without the tree of knowledge remember Adam and Eve ate that tree Amen. God can never look at us and say behold man have become like us mm. see church folks miss that mm. man couldn't become like God until after he disobeyed and ate from the tree of what mm. knowledge mm. But the Christian church thinks that God is up there screaming, no, don't eat the fruit, Adam. I'm rooting for you. What? God is sovereign. God created the whole garden and put the tree in the middle of the garden and made the tree in the middle of the garden more beautiful than any other tree. Just so he could tell man, don't eat it. Because he already knew that man was too weak in his heart to resist eating it because he knew that once man eat it it would put into motion death once death is put into motion guess what his plan to save everybody through death is now in operation yes because you have stated one time he, man even Adam and Eve were born into sin oh Adam and Eve listen don't listen to the Christian preachers Billy Graham, Creflo Dollar, Kenneth Copeland all of, all of them they told you a lie about this one thing they tell you Adam and Eve were perfect that's why they got a song let's get back to Eden why, why do I want to get back to Eden I'm living in Eden oh. this is Eden oh. the garden of Eden was corrupt 
Now show me another Christian preacher that's going to say that. They got songs out saying let's get back to Eden like Eden is heaven. The garden of Eden was filthy. The only thing is Adam and Eve didn't know it. Mm. That's why it wasn't until after they ate from the knowledge that they put on clothes. They were already walking around naked, but they didn't know it. Mm -hmm. And then the only way we're going to know what's right is to fall seven times. We've got to go through evil. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Am I making any sense today, brother? Amen. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so Lord. the Christian church is lost. Lost, lost, lost. And now it's time to get found. 1570 North Military Highway. It's a holiday inn. Tonight is free of charge, fully interactive. You can ask all the questions you like. Let's go to the phone lines. I only got five minutes. Is it, did anybody learn anything today? I know we did a lot of teaching and talking. Did anybody learn anything? Tonight we're going to close out this topic of salvation. I've been getting a lot of questions about Lazarus and the rich man. I'm going to try to, maybe we'll be able to hit on that and these symbols in the Bible and really just knock it out of the box so we can move on back to our symbolism and uncovering the book of Revelation and, and, and the symbols of the Bible. Okay, got another caller? Three five seven nine five four six. I got four minutes. Did anybody learn anything today? If you learned anything, will you be man or woman enough to call and say, Pastor, I didn't know, but now I do. Call me up right now. Three five seven nine five four six six two two nine five four six. Quickly, quickly, quickly. I only have about four minutes. Give me a ring. Let's go. Caller, you're on the air. Thank oh, you for yeah, tuning I in. I learned something. I took a, a teaching position in Florida, and I always prayed, came in early so I could pray before taking care of the children. The principal always was there calling me to come in and pray with her. I'm, I'm speeding here just to give you an idea. Yes. But you said that when you choose God over um, the devil, you were talking something like that. Basically, my point is, that I chose God over that woman who wanted me to be a lesbian. She was coming, pretending she wanted me to pray with her, so finally I would pray with her. She was interrupting my prayer time. I was going in early to pray before I could get to the kids and, you know, get them situated more. And then she started asking, a uh, principal started telling me how much she loved me on and on. I ended up quitting that job. God blessed me with another one, and my life has been better and better. God since. bless you. But if I had slept with that principal... You would have missed your blessing. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I got one minute. I'm sorry. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. Yes, don't sleep. Listen, uh, if you get... Listen, no lesbians... No homosexuals, none of that, none of that's gonna make it into the kingdom of God. God has to clean you inside out. Simple as that. It's sin, it's sin, it's sin. Stay away from all mustaches, touching mustaches, all women that's rubbing together, making fires. Stay away from it. It's not of God. That's it. All right. Three five seven nine five four six. Tonight, 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 I gotta go. Meet me at 1570 North Military Highway, the holiday inn. Doors open at 730. Meet me, meet me, meet me there. Free of charge. Listen, for more information, call my phone direct. You can call me or text me on my personal number for more information at 804-245-7009. My personal number for you can give me comments about this or, or questions, 804-245-7009. By the way, go to PastorRob.us right now and donate or download any topic.